All right, folks, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being on today's press call. Uh, my name is Tyler Cherry. I'm the Director of Rapid Response and a spokesperson for the Arizona Democratic Party uh, and will emcee today's press call. As you all know, this call comes ahead of Mike Pence's visits to Tucson and Mesa today, where he'll first do an event with police and then later do an event with Latter-day Saints voters. If passes prologue, Arizonans won't be surprised when Mike Pence misrepresents Vice President Joe Biden's record in an attempt to distract from the Trump administration's failures on COVID-19. Uh, at the top, I'll just note that Biden's record is clear. He opposes defunding the police and will prioritize keeping Americans safe, uh, no matter what we hear from Vice President Pence today. Uh, as Pence meets with Latter-day Saints voters today in Mesa, we're grateful to be joined by Rob Tabor, the national co-chair of Latter-day Saint Democrats of America, who will speak about the fundamental American value of religious freedom. We're also joined by Arizona community leaders who will discuss how Trump's failed leadership has hurt working families, seniors, and communities of color across Arizona. Uh, we have today with us House Democratic Whip and ranking member of the Arizona House Education Committee, Reginald Boulding, Representative Andres Cano, and Sandra Cole, President of the Arizona Alliance for Retired Americans, uh, some quick top line logistics for the call. This call is on the record and is being recorded. Uh, if you'd like a recording of the call, please feel free to email me at the email that you received this morning. Uh, and there will be time for a Q&A session after the speakers give their remarks. Uh, and with that, I will turn it over to Rob. Rob? Thanks, Tyler. Uh, it's good to join everyone. Uh, good morning, everyone. So my name is Rob Tabor. I am the national co-chair of LDS Democrats of America. And I'm pleased that I have the opportunity to talk with you today before uh, Vice President Pence's meeting this afternoon. And one thing that we continue to be disgusted by is the way the Trump-Pence administration uh, uses religion and specifically the Bible as a political prop while attacking the values that voters of faith hold most dear. Uh, to me, religious freedom means that Americans of all faiths have the ability to safely and freely live out our beliefs. America was built on a foundation of religious freedom, tolerance, and also mutual obligation to one another to care for one another, something that the Trump-Pence administration continues to undermine time and again. Today, in the face of Donald Trump's intolerance and politics of division, fear, and hatred, it's more important than ever that we redouble our efforts to live up to our highest values. Uh, and this is why I'm proud to support Vice President Biden in his campaign to restore the soul of America. This involves combating hate and extremism that targets people of any faith. And to do that, we need elected officials who will lead by example, but with tolerance and understanding from the highest levels of government. Uh, I was shocked um, after the white supremacist rally in Charlottesville when President Trump uh, claimed that there were good people on both sides. Um, this was an anti-Semitic, anti-Black um, rally and I don't see how you can say that there were good people on both sides. And I know Vice President Pence failed to correct him on that point. We need to restore a national culture of inclusiveness that encourages people of all faiths to celebrate their beliefs openly and without fear of harm or reprisal. And Joe Biden will be that president who protects religious freedom for everyone. Donald Trump's actions as president time and again have gone against these most basic tenets of our faith, caring for the poor and less fortunate, leading with compassion and empathy, and helping families and individuals thrive and build self-reliance. And due to his invective, invective again, you see these anti-Semitic, Islamophobic attacks um, that have increased under his presidency. We've seen the ways that he's cheapened Christianity. Throughout his presidency, Trump has used the Bible as a political prop while attacking American values by tearing apart immigrant families, targeting the most vulnerable among us, recklessly attempting to rip away health care, something he's still trying to do with his lawsuit against the Affordable Care and Patient Protection Act, and pursuing his own personal wealth and corruption before everything else. But Trump's failure of moral leadership during the pandemic has been absolutely staggering. This includes attacking medical experts, delaying economic relief for working families, and gambling with children's health and safety something we should be all you know, putting as a priority is protecting children, protecting the most vulnerable, but he refuses to do that. Faith teaches us to walk humbly and to serve others. But President Trump, he tear-gassed peaceful protesters so he could walk over to a church for a photo op. 
We cannot afford another four years of Donald Trump, and the next four will be worse than the past four. In contrast, Joe Biden has publicly announced his plans to safeguard houses of worship and to protect members of minority faiths, uh, including the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, uh, which he defended multiple times during Senator Romney's uh, runs for the presidency. Uh, P Vice President Biden believes in a robust definition of religious freedom, where the best way to protect faith groups is to allow all of them to thrive. And it's an area where he's led at home and abroad throughout his long career. And that's the kind of moral leadership that we need um, as Americans and that we deserve in a president. Now it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Representative Bolding, who represents the Arizona 27th and is the minority whip in the Arizona House of Representatives. Thanks, Rob. I really appreciate it. Thank you all for uh, joining us um, today. Uh, what we know is that next week here in Arizona, uh, schools are set to reopen. Uh, and yet Trump has no plan to get students, teachers, and staff back into the classroom. Instead, we know that he is risking our children and our teachers and our families' health by demanding that schools reopen without the tools that they need to keep communities safe. You know, while students, uh, teachers, and families agonize over these next few weeks and what to do, Trump has continued to downplay this threat. In fact, he even said young people are virtually immune to the coronavirus. But what we know by a study that was just, just released uh, by the American Academy of Pediatrics that 97,000 children tested positive for coronavirus during the last two weeks of July alone. That goes against everything that President Trump has told and said in the media. He has consistently deceived our families and our students, and that's truly putting families at risk. We need leadership. Uh, we need a proper plan from the White House, uh, not reckless threats to cut off funding unless schools are reopening. That's literally putting families in positions, uh, very difficult positions. Trump has rushed to reopen the state without ensuring public health, and we know how that has turned out. Here in Arizona, we've seen an increasing rise uh, of this public pandemic, and that was part of the, the Trump-Pence plan uh, to continue to move forward without actual facts and listening to even his own medical experts, including Dr. Fauci. Expert. Uh, pediatric, pediatricians, teachers, parents, uh, they don't trust Trump to make this life or death decision. Trump is willing to endanger the health of children, teachers, and family to help his reelection. We don't, and we won't stand for that. Uh, when it comes to our schools, the education community will follow the science, uh, not the Trump administration's mandates. In contrast, what we know is Vice President Joe Biden has a plan to safely reopen schools by getting the virus under control, which is the most important thing to do right now. Setting national safety guidelines while empowering local districts and providing emergency funding for schools and child care providers. Every day that Trump is in charge, he is endangering the health and safety of our students, our children, and our teachers. And instead of coming up with a coherent plan, he's spending his days out walking or making claims that we know to not be backed. So what we know is that Donald Trump has failed to deliver on a national school safety reopening strategy, and that will keep students, teachers, uh, and families unsafe as long as he is currently occupying the White House. Thank you. And with that, I'd like to pass it over uh, to State Representative Andres Cano. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Bolding. My name is Andres Cano, and I represent District 3 in the State House, which includes Tucson. The bottom line is that Latinos are bearing the brunt of Donald Trump's failed economic policies. And thanks to his pandemic response, the unemployment rate in uh, Arizona and throughout this country remains in the double digits. And hundreds of thousands of Arizonans are still out of work. Trump failed. Americans from day one, but it didn't have to be this bad. Other leaders took bold, decisive leadership and early action, and now their countries have a fraction of the cases and deaths that we do. Trump never did that. 
Trump has no plan to confront the virus. And instead of fighting the virus, Trump spent his weekend golfing. He's only attended one formal task force briefing in at least three months. And now, after tanking good faith negotiations to extend economic relief for working families, Trump is cutting unemployment benefits by $200 a week and absolutely exploiting a public health crisis to gut Social Security funding right when our communities need help the most. Trump's disastrous pandemic response has also fallen hardest on our most vulnerable communities, including seniors, working families, and communities of color. Approximately 59% of Latinos said in May that they live in households that have experienced job losses or pay cuts as a result of the coronavirus, compared to 43% for U.S. adults as a whole. And more than 100,000 small businesses across the country and here in Arizona have closed for good, with Black-owned businesses shutting down at twice the rate. Trump and his administration are utterly disconnected from the pain and the suffering that so many families across the country are experiencing. And with millions of Americans out of work and the unemployment picture getting worse and worse, Trump thinks that the economy is doing very well, his words. While families struggle to pay rent and their bills, Trump wasn't working to get them more relief. He was hitting the links at his golf course or on vacation. Latinx workers like those in my district and small business owners across Arizona have been left behind by this administration. The economic data for the Latinx community is overwhelming and shows the deep economic pain that this community, our community, is feeling. And meanwhile, Trump's failed ec economy is decimating an entire generation of wealth in Latinx families. As of July, 29% of Latino families have had someone in their household lose a job while Latino small business owners struggle to make ends meet or close up shop entirely. This is the reality that we are facing here in Arizona. And I know that ultimately with a leader like Joe Biden, who will rely on science and experts to guide his coronavirus response, including in developing a vaccine, that's the kind of leadership that we ought to be supporting. And at every step of this crisis, Trump has put the political considerations ahead of the health and safety of Americans. And I'm supporting Joe Biden in this effort because what we have to do is get real, accept science, and listen to our public health officials. And I'm so honored to be here with all of you on this call and now turn it over to Sandra Cole with the Arizona Alliance for Retired Americans. Thank you, Representative. My name again is Sandra Cole. I'm president of the Arizona Alliance for Retired Americans. We have 44,000 members here in Arizona. Uh, we fight for um, Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid for future generations, not just for us, but for our future um, generations. I um, am a senior. I'm 71 years old. And in March, my daughter um, called me and said, Sandra, our mom, <laughs> mom, uh, please don't go out. Please, please, please don't go out. If, I, if you need anything, I will bring you groceries. I will do whatever I can. I don't want you going out because I'm afraid that some, you, know, you will catch this virus. So she um, keeps a very close eye on me. And then my neighbor calls me and checks up on me. And she, uh, when I only need eggs or bread or something, she would uh, get that for me instead of my daughter doing it. And then yesterday, um, another neighbor came to my door with the mask on and said, Sandra, are you all right? I haven't seen you for a while. And I said, yeah, I'm fine. I'm just, you know, hunkering down here because of, you know, the coronavirus. So, I'm, you know, we're sitting here um, worried about it. I, I have a really good support system. A lot of seniors don't. And if you know a senior, a neighbor, or a relative, please, you know, touch bases with them because it's very uh, makes me feel really good that I have people neighbors looking out for me and it, a little kindness goes a long ways for a senior not only that that we're worried about going out I did this for like six to eight weeks I stayed in and then I'm starting the only place I go now is to get groceries or get medic my meds and then um, you know not getting any leadership from the president, you know, it's stressful enough knowing that, you know, I'm one of the, you know, 
at risk people here that um, my dog's going to bark <laughs> that um, now the president has said that he's going to um, have a pay tax um, payroll tax uh, holiday and that's a direct hit on social security and uh, social security is going to be 85 years old in on friday so it's a t tried and true um, uh, um, issue for us because what's what we live on and just last month and this month my utilities have gone up my um, insurance my health insurance has gone up let alone my prescriptions have gone up and if you have and luckily i don't have um, asthma or i'm not a diabetic you know those I, I don't know how people are making it with that and also um food and gas and i don't know how we can uh, survive on this if he, he tax social security i i don't understand why he is doing this it's it's bad enough that we're worried about our health but now we're worried about our own livelihoods sitting here at home so we need someone that is going to be strong and consistent on helping seniors and uh, I know that that's going to be uh, who we're going to be voting for in November so I thank you for allowing me to have my speak speaking so thank you very much <laughs> awesome thank you to all of our speakers um, we can now enter into a Q&A session. Uh, if folks have a question for any of our speakers, you can either drop it into the chat uh, and I can read it aloud, or feel free to raise your hand with the raise hand button. Um, and if you have a question for a specific speaker, uh, please address it to them. Otherwise, we'll pose it to the group. And um, with that, we'll begin our Q&A. Any questions for our speakers? Here we go. Uh, President Trump has installed hundreds of conservative judges. How would Biden approach nominations to the federal judiciary? Um, this isn't addressed to anyone specific. Uh, so if anyone wants to speak to this, uh, feel free to unmute yourself. Sure, I'll speak to that just briefly. Uh, something that's notable about uh, President Trump's nominations is some of them are rated not qualified by the American Bar Association because he cares more about having partisan lawyers on the bench than about making sure that we have judges who are fairly balancing the law and looking out for everyone. And so something that I'm looking for from the Biden administration is just making sure that whoever is being nominated to the bench uh, is qualified. Uh, it's very easy to be qualified by the American Bar Association and they should be able to meet that standard. Yeah, and, and this is this is Reginald voting. I mean, the reality is is that uh, after after four years, Trump has spent uh, nearly stacking uh, the the bench with extreme conservative judges, um, and we know that can have a generational effect. Um, you know what we've heard uh, from uh, Vice President Biden is that he will take an approach in which um, judges will be able to get back to what they were all about, actually making decisions that were based on uh, fair, just laws and interpretations and not uh, judging um, uh, ju judges based off of uh, their, their political views. And we've seen a court that has moved much po more political and, and partisan in which we don't want that system here in this country. We also know that uh, the vice president has talked about ensuring that the bench looks just like the country and making sure that uh, he's diversifying the bench to ensure that uh, all viewpoints are actually um, are all viewpoints are represented and that's and that's important you know to make sure that you're having not only well qualified judges um, that you're not having judges who are looking to make political statements judges that have the ability to really fairly assess what's taking place uh, what's what's coming in front of them and and, and I'm confident that Vice President uh, Biden uh, will make uh, and will nominate uh, those federal uh, judges uh, who, who fit that category.
Great, thank you, Rob and Representative Boulding. Uh, if folks have any other questions, feel free to drop it into the chat or hit the raise hand button and I can unmute you. This is Sandra. I would also say that um, with the, uh, the Rep Republicans talking about entitlements, which is Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid, that uh, I that means that the courts are stacked. That means that we seniors are under attack again, because that is what they're they are promoting is that their entitlements and they don't understand that we are these are earned benefits and that Social Security has nothing to do with the budget. It's a completely separate pot of money, and they should you know they shouldn't be going after that. But if they've been doing this propaganda thing about Social Security and Medicare as being entitlements, and that is a really um, detrimental for seniors. You know, Tyler, I'm just going to add in really quick, since uh, the Vice President is visiting uh, Southern Arizona, where my district is located, I, I wish that uh, this administration would look into the eyes of folks facing the very worst of this uh, pandemic. If, if a visit was focused on going to visit a food shelter, or to visit the Department of Economic Security and the lines in dozens, hundreds of thousands of Arizonans who are trying to get through our unemployment system and need an extended relief. Those are the kind of conversations that I wish this administration would be willing to have and the kind of direct contact that I wish that they'd have with Americans who need their help. This administration refused to do that. And until they're willing to take a serious look at this issue, uh, I don't know what else we can do differently other than elect Joe Biden as our next president. And Sandra, again, I want to uh, also w wish that uh, Vice President Pence would go to the uh, food banks and see the people lined up that's wanting food and maybe going to a, 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 an in-care um, hospital and have them see what seniors are going through and that so, so he can really see what's going on in Arizona and in the country because this is just, you know, we're just part of the whole nation here. Thank you to our speakers. Uh, if anyone has any other questions, um, feel free to drop it in the chat or hit the raise hand button. Um, and if there's nothing in the next few seconds, then that will conclude our call. Last call for any questions and answers. Um, Tyler, I do have one more thing I want to say. Of course. Is that uh, Latter-day Saints are noticing the failures of the Trump-Pence administration. Know that Latter-day Saints or Mormons generally break 80-20 for the Republican candidate. And a May survey of alumni of Brigham Young University who are millennials uh, reject the Trump-Pence administration with only 22% saying they'll support them. And 52% of millennial BYU alumni already saying that they're supporting Vice President Biden uh, in this year's election. This time is different. Uh, the failures are that stark. And that's something that we should keep in mind as Pence tries to shore up support in Arizona today. Great, thank you. Uh, it looks like that is it for our question and answer session. Uh, thank you to everyone for taking the time to join our press call this morning. Thank you so very much to our speakers. Um, if you have emailed me uh, that you would like a copy of the recording of today's call, you will get that in your inbox today. And if you would like it, uh, please feel free to send me an email, uh, the email that you received this morning. Uh, and any other questions that you have, feel free to send them my way. Uh, and with that, we will wrap up the call. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.